GameMaker offers a few functions to control the window where the game is displayed on your screen. Inside my objects, I have object room code, and inside the step event, I've got some window functions. The first function I want to show you is window has focus. This will return whether or not the game window is in focus. So I'm going to store that in a variable called window focus. And each of my variables I'm going to create today, I'm going to draw to the screen right here so we can read them inside the room. Now the easiest way to show you this is to just run the game and show you what it looks like when I have focus and when I don't have focus. So as you can see, I've got a 1, meaning true, I do have focus. This, this game is in focus right now. But if I were to click on some other thing, I've now lost focus. You can see Windows has made this white to show that I'm not in focus. GameMaker has picked it up and now given me a 0 for false. You can use this to check if a game is in focus or not in focus to either have your audio play or not play, or you might have a way of pausing your game. So if your game is not in focus, the game will pause. It's a really good way to help out players when they lose focus from the actual game window. The next function I want to talk about is Window Center. It's really simple, it just centers the region based on the viewable or browser area. I'm not going to get into HTML5, I'm just talking about Windows, so we're just concentrating on the viewable area. That's the resolution of your monitor, however you have that set up. So if I press the space key, the window will center in frame, and I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, my game window is centered right now, but if I move it somewhere else, and then press the space key, it's gone back to the center of the view. Uh, this might produce different results if you have multiple monitors set up, but I only have one monitor right now, so it's centered it into the view of my only monitor. The next thing I want to show you is window get caption and window set caption. This is the information that appears at the top bar of a window, like here, window view functions.project.gmx. You can get it stored in something or even set it here. Now, this is possible through the global game settings. If I went to Windows, uh, right there we have display name, Game Maker Studio. So you can set it here, but if you want to dynamically change it while the game is running, you can always use window set caption. Uh, I'm just going to set it to the word caption if I press the C key. So let's see what that looks like. So the second line of my room says, caption is Game Maker Studio, which is true. I set that in my global game settings, and sure enough, at the top of my window, it says Game Maker Studio. If I press the C key to change the caption, I've now changed caption to caption, and of course, it's been updated here. So you could set this to whatever you want. You can set it to a player's health. You could set it to the room he's in, some sort of area. You can change it to whatever you want, really. Uh, it's that dynamic. The next function deals with setting the color outside of the viewable region of your game. So this will get or set the color of the region inside the window, but outside the visible views. This is black by default, which is probably fine, but sometimes you need to change it. So you can window get the color, which I'm going to store in a variable, or when I press the B key, I'm going to use the function choose to set the window color to either white or green. So every time I press B, it'll just randomly flip a coin uh, and choose one of these two options. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now right now, there isn't any area outside of my viewable area. I would have to scale my view, there we go, to get these black bars, kind of like letterboxing. And if I press B, I can change it to either green or white. It'll flip a coin. So this is one way to change the color that's on the outside of your game if it's not fully in view. For instance, if your game is 4x3, but it at full screen, it would be 16x9, or you allow the player to resize the game window, then you would get this outer region right here. You are able in the global game settings to make sure that your game always loads up in full screen. Down here for graphics, we've got start in full screen mode. Now you can also change between full screen and windowed right here. Using window get full screen, we can check whether or not it's in full screen, and with window set full screen, we can set it to true or false. So this will return or set whether the game will run in full screen or not. If I press the F key right there, if the game is not currently running in full screen, it'll make it full screen. Else, 
it will make it not full screen. So I've just set up a toggle here. If I press F, it'll toggle between full screen and windowed mode. So I'll show you what that looks like. So right now the game is running in windowed mode, but if I press the F key, the game is now full screen, which is another way you can see the outer black areas or green or white, whichever color I have it set up to. And if I press the F key again, my game returns to the regular windowed mode. The next functions deal with scaling the window. So we've got getting and setting the width and height of the window. So window get height and window get width will be stored inside window width and window height. And if I press the S key, I will window set size uh, to window width, which is where I'm storing this, uh, divided by two, this is div, so I'm only going to get the quotient from the division. Uh, so if there's a remainder or decimal or whatever, I'm only going to deal with the part before the decimal, the non-remainder portion or the quotient. Um, I'm going to do the same with height. So all it's doing is taking my room size right now, which is 640 by 640. It's going to divide that by 2, which will be 320 by 320, and that'll be my new window size. So if I press the S key, we'll see that happen. So right now my room is 640 by 640 and the window is displaying it at 640 by 640. But if I press the S key, it's now divided itself by two. So this is now a 320 by 320 room. Uh, this could be important if you want to multiply it or divide it or whatever. If someone wants to be able to scale the game window without creating strange different sizes, you want to keep it at the right aspect for your game. So I can keep hitting S and keep dividing this. Uh, I actually have a minimum set to it, so it's not dividing any more than that. But that is something you can do. Instead of dividing, you can multiply it. So you can have a standard small screen, then multiply it by two, multiply it by three, or whatever, before going to full screen. You could also set the position of the window. Uh, this gets and sets the X and Y position of the window inside the browser or visible area of the screen. So I'm storing window get the X and putting it in window X and getting the Y and storing it in window Y. And if I press P for position, that's how I set it up, I'm going to window set position, window X minus 10. So I'm just going to move it 10 from where it currently is. And window Y plus 20, I'm going to move it Y plus 20. And here's what that will look like. So my window starts in the center. And I've got my X and Y position right here. This is where it lives on my screen. And if I press P to change position, it's just going to jump down my screen. So I'm increasing the Y position on my actual desktop screen, my, the resolution of my monitor. And it's going to go left every time I press it. Now, this could be interesting and used as some sort of game mechanic. I have seen that done where this position actually follows the player on screen and moves the window around. And uh, it's an interesting effect. Um, or you might be able to find a better use for it. Um, if the window is out of screen or something, it can move to where it's supposed to be. Another window function that might be important to you is window get cursor and window set cursor. I'm actually going to hop into the manual to show you this. So there are different game maker names for each built-in kind of Windows look. There's cursor, uh, no cursor, the default arrow, cross, beam, uh, usually used for text. Um, we've got the hourglass, whatever that is for the Windows version you're using, the drag finger or hand point, the size all, we also have the different sizes. So you might need these for your game. You might actually use the hourglass if your game is loading or maybe the drag function is necessary. It's just an easy way to get the built-in Windows uh, cursors. So I can get that cursor and store it in a variable. Also, if ever I click my left mouse button, I'm just going to get it to choose default, hourglass, or drag. Just pick whatever one at random. And this is what it looks like when I'm actually in the game. So I've written down here cursor, which is zero. That's just the default cursor. And if I left click, I now have the loading one. It actually looks like the game is loading something. It's not. I'm just displaying the hourglass version of the arrow, which GameMaker has called minus 11. Uh, I can click again a few times. I'll go back there. It's uh, randomly selected the finger point or the drag, which is negative 12. So this is a quick and easy way to just pick different cursors, depending on if you're in a different region. Um, for instance, 
you could have the default arrow and whenever you're mousing over a button you can actually switch to the hand to make it look like it's a clickable button just certain things like that that uh, windows users are used to speaking of the cursor you can actually move it around or get its position relative to the game window with window mouse get x we can get the Y or X coordinate of the mouse in the window. We can also set it, which I have commented out for now, and I'll show you why in a moment. Just if I hop into game quickly, I actually have uh, mouse position X and mouse position Y displayed here. This is not relative to the room, and it is not relative to the screen. It is relative to the window. This is the game window being displayed. So if I go to the very top left corner, I might be able to get to zero. Probably not. I just kind of leave the room. If I'm outside of the room here, it doesn't pick it up because I'm only talking about the position within the game window. Uh, if I go down here, I should be at my 640. And if I do scale, if you remember when I divided this by 2, uh, this actually is relative as well. So if I come down here, it's 320 at the very bottom corner instead of 640. So it's actually reading the X and Y of the actual game window. Now the reason I didn't talk about the other part here is because the way I set it up is interesting but restrictive. If window has focus, we've learned that before, window mouse set. I'm going to actually put the mouse cursor somewhere. Where am I going to put that? Well, I'm going to put it at my window's width, whatever the actual scaling of the game window is, and divide both of those by two. This will put me in the very middle of the screen. This actually might be important to you if you've made some sort of first-person shooter game or something like that. I can, If I move fast enough, I can try to move away from the center. But it has, it's trying to lock it to the center as best it can. I can move really fast and move out of it. But that's what it's doing. If my window is in focus, then it's going to set my mouse cursor to the center of the game window. This will be unlocked when you Alt-Tab to another program. And if I Alt-Tab back in, I'll have focus again, therefore the cursor will go back to the center. Something you might need for a first-person shooter game. Now that you know about scaling the window, you actually might be in need of some sort of minimum or maximum. And that is available to you. With window set min width and max width, and min height and max height, you can decide how big or how small the window is allowed to be, either by scaling uh, when I was pressing the S button to scale or whatever else. Um, this is important uh, if you want players to be able to use scale through various sizes of the window, but obviously it just would be horrible if it was scaled down to 2x2 two two, or if it exceeded the size of their display. And I'll get into display in another video, so you can actually get the resolution of someone's uh, monitor. But for now, you can actually just set min and max. And I've already kind of showed you how that works. When I was scaling the window, it wouldn't go past a certain amount. It actually won't go past half the size of 640. If I press it again, though, uh, it actually tries to scale uh, the display of the room. The application surface is doing that. And then scaling back up to 320. So... Uh, that's not what we want, but that's just a problem with two different things overlapping each other. So there are ways around that. I'll make another video on that. And the last thing I want to show you here is setting the position uh, based on uh, window set rectangle. This is actually a whole thing. Uh, so if I press R, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to create some variables here called display center x. This is going to get the center of the screen uh, with respect to the game window. So you'll have to watch my display video to understand these display functions, but I'm going to get the display width, that's the monitor, uh, divide that by 2 to find halfway into the monitor, and I'm going to minus that by the game window's width divided by 2. So that'll put it dead center width, and I did the same thing for height. And how that's relevant is with this function, window set rectangle. Rectangle is the game window. And this will take some arguments here. The X position, the Y position, the width, and the height. So for the positions, I'm going to put center screen, the display center X and display center Y. And I'm going to reset the width and the height to 640. This is actually one function you can use to change the position and the scale without going through all the other function I showed you earlier, if that's what you need. Now, 
Of course, there was already window center. This is going to do the exact same thing. But to show you what I mean, if I move it somewhere else, we can see that my X and Y changed for my window. And if I press R for reset, there we go. What's cool is that if I scale this and move it, we now have a different scale and a different position, but we're going to press the R key right here, and we're going to put it back into the center and reset its scale as well. So if I hit R, everything's back to how it was. It actually went through the uh, the position first at 320 and then scaled it up. So it's not in the right spot, unfortunately. Um, but we can always use center as well. So if I scale it back down, put it somewhere else, I could also use center in window to this scale, reset, or hit center again. Either way, there are all these great window functions you can use um, for various reasons, because sometimes players need ways to set up their game windows because they have different resolutions, different monitors, different whatever, and it's very important to give them these options because you have no idea what their setup looks like. And I hope now you understand the window functions for GameMaker Studio.